Ladies, gentlemen, and pals of all ages, today we are diving deep into the PAL world experience to talk about some lesser known, or at least lesser owned, PALs. Some that are extremely powerful, some that are extremely cool, but a lot of these you may not even realize exist until you've explored the PAL decks online, maybe. And today we're going to talk about how to find and catch 10 of these rare and powerful PALs for yourself really easily. First up today, then, let's talk about Grizzbolt. He's the main boss of the first tower fight within the game, and after seeing him in this tower, you might expect him to start spawning more in the open world past that point, but that actually isn't really the case. To be more specific, Grizzbolt does spawn in the open world, but in one very specific place, which is quite far out, especially early in the game. Which brings us to our main adventure of the day, Wildlife Sanctuaries. Around the map of Pal World, there are three of these Wildlife Sanctuary areas. They are off the coast of three extreme ends of the map, and each of them has Pals that are completely exclusive to their location. It is literally illegal within the game to even step into these areas, you'll be wanted immediately, not to mention actually catch the Pals, so guards will spawn when you are on these islands, unless you're riding a flying creature. But with their unique pals, of course, makes them worth going to. Two of these sanctuaries are somewhat later game areas, but the first one, Wildlife Sanctuary number one, is actually in the low level 20s, and you can find it here on the southern side of your map. A number of interesting creatures spawn here, but the rare spawn of this island is Grizzbolt. So he isn't necessarily likely to be all over the place here, but he can spawn here, and he can't spawn anywhere else. It's the only place he spawns in the open world as a whole. Aside from this, you can, of course, breed into him, but given this is really quite low level, we won't go too far into that. Grizzbolt is a strong Thunder Pal, looks really cool of course, a ton of high value base skills at decent levels, making him a decent base worker too, and his special ability is in fact the minigun once you unlock it, which I'll leave you to find and enjoy for yourself. Second then, we have Felbat. This one is a bit more common, it has an open world alpha boss right here, and you can find it in the Grassland Dungeon specifically, but it doesn't naturally spawn in the overworld. Generally you can find this in the high teens, low twenties level wise, so it is an easy catch, but most most people underestimate this pal when they first see him, as its partner skill, actually unlocked by default, is Life Steal, which literally gives you Life Steal on the damage that you do so you can heal for doing damage while this pal is on the field. For somewhat obvious reasons, that is actually an extremely unique and powerful skill, as there are very, very few ways for the player to heal actively other than natural regeneration from avoiding attacks for a long period of time. But this lets you be more aggressive and take more hits within a fight and heal up yourself manually in a way that no other pal offers. Also, it has Medicine Protection level 3 as a base skill, which is a pretty solid work skill when you need it, so that's pretty nice too. Third up then is a very fun one, bringing us to our next of the Wildlife Sanctuaries, number 2. This one is located on the very west of the map, between the massive volcano off the coast over there, and while there are a number of interesting things that you can find here, the biggest deal by far is a little pal by the name of Jormantide Ignis. This guy looks absolutely incredible, and of course, regular Jormantide is already a really solid pal, but this is just the fire version. Fire Dragon Typing, level 4 Kindling base skill is fantastic, and he just looks awesome to boot. This one spawns generally around level 40-ish, and again, the only place that you can find it is Wildlife Sanctuary 2. This one isn't even breedable outside of having two of itself to breed together, at which point you obviously will already have one, so this one is extremely rare for that reason alone, if nothing else. Then our fourth pal of the day is Suzaku Aqua. This absolutely beautiful water creature doesn't have a single spawn on the entire map, not in the open world, in a general area, not as an alpha boss, nothing like that, and so the only way to create it is actually through breeding two specific pals, those pals being regular Suzaku and then also regular Jormantide, both of which you can find as alpha bosses in these locations here. It can be a bit hard to squeeze them into the breeding farm together because they're both pretty big, but once you do, this is the creature that you will get. On top of just looking incredibly good and being just a generally strong water pal, it also has watering level 3 as a base skill if you want to keep it around for that purpose too. Fifth up then we head to our big final adventure location of the day, which is Wildlife Sanctuary number 3. Three, all the way up in the northeast side of the map past the super endgame areas. This one is much higher base level pals, 40 at the absolute minimum, and our first target that can spawn here is actually Lyleen. This is the pal that holds the Spirit Emperor skill, 20% bonus damage with grass attacks, and it also has a massive collection of fantastic base work skills too that make it worth using in spades there as well. This one can actually be gotten a bit earlier as well through breeding, for which the combination is Mossanda, who you can find all around the Mossanda forest location named for that reason and Petalia, who has a level 28 alpha boss fight right here at the Ancient Ritual site. Sixth up today is an extension of the last one, which is Lyleen Noct, the dark type version of Lyleen. And I have to say, this one is one of the prettiest pals in the whole game. I love the bioluminescence, the sparkly night sky-like petal skirt, the color scheme in general, it's just such a good design. And again, similar base skill effectiveness, but basically just the dark type version of Lyleen otherwise. This one actually does have an alpha boss location, interestingly enough, unlike regular Lyleen, 
and it's up over in the Big Snow Mountains to the northwest of the map, but at level 49, which is of course quite high. But if you get yourself Lyleen a bit earlier than that, you can also just breed to create this by combining Lyleen herself with Menesting, the big scorpion pal. This guy has an alpha world boss spawn over here in the desert to the northeast, but can also spawn naturally in, well, wildlife sanctuary number two. So it of course all comes back together. Seventh then we have a lovely fellow by the name of Phalaris. This beautiful phoenix slash falcon themed pal is the, quite the unique fire type, even having its own unique attack with 135 power called Phoenix Flare. Level three kindling, level three transporting is base skills, so a great base work pal as well, and it can be ridden as a flying mount too. If you want this one for yourself, it lives its life out in the wildlife sanctuary number three, again in the northeast corner, one of the rare spawns of the location. Or you can breed it out earlier in the game through the combination of Van Worm, who spawns all around this section of the map quite frequently, as well as Anubis, who is an alpha boss spawn, but you can also create him through various breeding combinations to actually get him at an early level two if you want to chain these together. Eighth up then we have Orzerk, just this big badass shark dinosaur hybrid like creature with electric fairy wings and that is about as ridiculous as it gets but I love this design as well. And this is the pal that has the Lord of Lightning skill which is the plus 20% lightning attack damage skill. Electric and dragon for its typing, level four electricity among some other great base work skills too, so great all around really. And then as far as how to get him, he again is one of the rare spawn pals on Wildlife Sanctuary number three. Or you can breed him much earlier into the game through a combination of Grizzbolt, who we talked about getting earlier, and also Relaxaurus, who spawns at a relatively early game friendly part of the map and isn't even all that high level either, so you can actually get this quite early on if you want to. Ninth then today is going to be found at Wildlife Sanctuary number three once again, and it's a menacing bird by the name of Shadowbeak. This pal generally only appears at level 45 or so as well, so it's a pretty late game fight even for this location, and the actual pal itself has terrible gathering skills of course, but incredible actual fighting ability, with generally just quite high stats as a whole, but also the unique dark attack Divine Disaster. 160 power with a bunch of other effects too, it is just nutty strong, especially if you like the aesthetics of the edgy griffin design too. It's worth noting that this one too can be acquired through breeding, but given that one of the required pals to do so is Astagon, who is only found in the open world as a level 48 alpha boss, it's actually easier to get the Shadowbeak himself than it is from breeding because of that, and so it's just easier to do unless you want to do like a massive chain breed through generations upon generations of parents. Finally then, our last pal of the day is sort of the fifth legendary, but also not really. It's quite an interesting technicality to go by, as this one is Frostalian Noct, the dark type version of Frostalian, who is a legendary pal. That said, the way that we officially determine what is and isn't a legendary pal in this game is if they spawn with the legend passive skill. Frostalian Noct has no actual open world spawn at all, anywhere, in any way, shape, or form, and it only comes from breeding. So uh, technically speaking, by the rules that we've set, it isn't a confirmed legendary, but logically speaking, as it comes from breeding a legendary and no other way, it sort of technically has to be as well. It's sort of Schrodinger's legendary, but th either way, the actual creature is again, just absolutely gorgeous, fantastic color palette swap up here. Base skills aren't really too important for this one, but it is just a badass pal. Great stats once actually leveled up, and more often than not, we'll have the legend skill due to being created by breeding with legendary, though not guaranteed. I want to note again, one of the parents is of course, regular Frost Alien, who spawns as a level 50 alpha boss up in the northwesternmost tip of the map up here, then the other parent will actually be Hell Zephyr, the cool flaming darkness bird who spawns only at night in these areas near the center of the map by the ancient ritual site location. And that does it for today then everyone. 10 notably rare, powerful, and just honestly incredible looking creatures too. Some of them are great for your base, almost all of them are great for combat, and a lot of players up to this point have no idea about where to actually get at least the majority of these, so this was just to say, hey, by the way, these exist, they're really cool, and this is the way to get them if you want them. I hope you've all enjoyed this then, and maybe even spotted a new permanent companion for your group from this list, as they're just all really damn cool. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye